Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Tuesday, November 12th, 2013. Well, today was Veterans Day, so we had it was kind of a kind of a half of a holiday. Uh, banks and the bond markets were closed, but we had uh, the equities open, which is always kind of a, a precarious situation. But when everything was said and done, we didn't have very much net mo mo net movement at all. But uh, even when you have very little uh, movement, you want to take a look at the market internals to see if there was uh, was anything uh, done either uh, either positively or negatively. But today was really pretty much just a push. Uh, the advanced declines were basically flat in the New York trend, close at 0 0.87. Uh, the only possible negative is that we had a fairly low close in the trend that could color the average going forward, even though the averages had really nothing to show for it today. So I want to kick off... Uh, this week we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to look at the uh, the big three indexes. We'll look at the Dow futures. Uh, actually, let's look at the Dow Cash. We'll look at the uh, ES futures and the NQ futures, just on a pure uh, price basis, and take a look at uh, the active patterns in those uh, markets right now. All right, so here's a look at the Cash uh, Cash Dow 30. We uh, are definitely in this uh, you know upwardly slanted trading range. We've uh, had a couple good touches here at the lower boundary of this of this channel, and uh, it's really pretty well defined here. Right now, we're interacting with the uh, with the upper portion of this channel, but haven't really been able to uh, to break out of this little regression channel. So for now, uh, still contained within this pattern, and a breakout above this range uh, would be bullish and and. Uh, Definitely carry prices higher, but keep in mind that when you're when you're moving in a in a in a channel like this, you're you're really not building all that much energy because you keep you keep uh, building energy here. You expend it to get back to the top, so so there is energy in this pattern, but it's it's not that explosive type uh, where you've had a nice consolidation like a downward wedge or or something where there's there's a lot of energy being loaded into the market. All right, so here's a look at the uh, the NQ futures. We uh, did break out. The NQs were really leading the market. They broke out first uh, before the uh, before the ES did. There's really essentially two patterns going on here. There's there's this rising wedge that we broke out of. That's defined here by the uh, by the red lines. We have this this lo swing low set. We've got this higher low, and we've got this very very well defined upper boundary here of the uh, of the wedge we broke out above that fell back on this very sharp candle to the downside on Thursday but held the breakout level above that above that wedge had an inside day on um, on Friday and today we had this little tiny measuring day because we had the the, the pseudo holiday so price remains positive as long as we stay on the on the uh, north side of this wedge the alternate pattern is the dotted green line here which is a little bit of a bigger pattern and it looks a little bit more like the Dow where we have this this wide range of trading, but you can see we've been setting up these higher lows here. So that really kind of takes the uh, the real uh, wider trend channel off the table, and really I think pushes the primary uh, pattern into more of this wedge. But if we do fall back to the downside, keep in mind that uh, this uh, this lower boundary here of the old channel uh, should be fairly important to the market. But for now, we're still above the uh, the pattern. The pattern is still active. And we're on the north side of the breakout level. All right, and now here here are the ES futures. ES futures look a little bit more like the Nasdaq than the Dow. We did break out. The uh, Nasdaq broke out first. The ES is uh, still uh, still working on the north side of the breakout. We had this uh, sharp down day on thir on Thursday. The recovery on Friday, and today's a little little tiny tiny Doji day. Which is almost a new high close on the move. This other this other close is is uh, just a just a fraction higher, but uh, but if we clear the recent highs, this could be a nice little continuation to the upside tomorrow, if not to the downside. Obviously, uh, this two-day low is going to be very important, not only because it's the it's the weekly low from last week, but also because it's the uh, it's the uh, boundary of the active pattern right now in the ES futures. So let's move on and take a look at the levels and the bar counts and all that good stuff. All right, so here's a look at the ES futures since we were just examining those on the pattern basis. So here we are, 1750 is obviously the key level. That's certainly the sheriff in town. We've been uh, using that. That was resistance here initially on this on this on this original breakout. Remember the breakout was here over about 1725. 
ran up to 1750, had a couple of con uh, consolidation days, ran up a little bit higher only to retreat back down to that level again. But we're starting to push up here a little bit. If we do clear uh, last week's high, 1781 and a quarter is going to be the, the first level to watch, and the next level is going to be 181250, which is uh, plus two A's. That's, that, and of course, that, that's a pretty substantial move relative to uh, the way, way we've been moving as far as velocity goes, and plus two A's is going to be very, very significant resistance. So we've got key support at last week's low, which we just talked about, and then if we break below that and get into, fall back into the wedge, we're going to have support at 1718 from the, uh, from the 7 A's level on the Murray Math Box. Looking at the NQ futures, NQ futures still kind of pivoting around uh, this 7 8 level, closed right there. That was support uh, from from this original breakout. So this is still a very very active area of the market. So 33.60 is going to be real important to the market. If we break out above that, it puts uh, puts last week's highs in play. We can start talking about then the 8 8 level at 34.37.50. To the downside, uh, last week's low is going to be important. And then if we release below that, uh, 32.81 in that in and about that area, and then the 50 DMA would come into play. Now here's a look at the, the Dow Jones. This is the cash index. The the, the YMs look look very very similar. Uh, eight ace level, key support. But keep in mind here that we're at the plus one ace level right now. Uh, on the Marie Math Box, so that's going to be pretty good resistance. And if we do break out and push higher, this plus two ace level is going to be a big deal. So 15,937 in, in and about that area is going to be is going to be pretty good, pretty good resistance, even if we uh, we do make an initial push. So if we do make a push and break out above that, that's going to be your first trade to target. To the downside, eight ace area and last week's low, right in about the same area, is first support. Next support is going to be about 15,000. Uh, 460, 470, that area right there, which is the 7 ace level. All right, so the uh, S&P TLT cross made a new high today. Bonds were lower on the day, even though uh, the uh, S&P really didn't, didn't do too much. So we did uh, get another uptick and a new high in this ratio. So for now, people are still putting risk on in the market and taking taking money out of uh, bonds. So that those flows are still apparent here. We're still moving from the from the lower left to the upper right on the chart, so this uh, this trend is still in place and definitely one that is that is very important to the market to keep a bid under overall equities. All right, and taking a look at the multi-sector daily chart, a um, couple things to jump out at you right away: the the banks, which are the green line, didn't do very much today. Uh, fairly weak today. Uh, the semiconductors did nothing. The BTK was okay. A little bit of a bump up there, and a uh, little bit of action out of the uh, out of the XAU. But uh, still, just kind of uh, acting as a source of funds, even with even with the move in the dollar, um, that was it was really very very sharp last week. Uh, there really hasn't been too much too much movement in the overall GDX or or in gold for that matter. All right, and here's the uh, here are the sectors uh, ranked from best to best to worst today, and I think this is really telling, and this is really interesting because today, when the averages essentially did nothing. The market did what it was, what really it, it should be doing at this point in the recovery cycle. Let's look at the bottom sectors first. Housing sector was fairly weak. That's that's neither here nor there. The BKX was fairly weak, um, underperforming the overall market, and the semiconductors were also were also f um, underperforming the uh, the Nasdaq on a relative basis. But if we look at, up at the top of the list, up at the top of the list we had the transports. Uh, up a little less than half of a percent, pretty good showing on a very flat day. And the oil services index was also uh, very strong today. So those late cycle plays are starting to kick in a little bit. We had a little help today from Rig and uh, and Carl Icahn and all that all that financial engineering, but that didn't really affect the transport. So we're starting to see some uh, some healthy rotation here out of the early cycle plays into the late cycle plays. And as long as this continues, uh, this is very healthy for the overall market. All right, here's a look at the housing index. Um, could have some, some some key support here. We're kind of towards the bottom end of the recent trading range. We're now nine days down. So even though uh, the housing has been been kind of uh, shunned for some other uh, more uh, economically sensitive uh, sectors like the transports and the oil services, don't don't uh, don't overlook the housing index right now. This could definitely pivot 
and uh, produce some uh, some nice runs later on this week. Here's the BKX. BKX had a uh, big day on the uh, on the number from Friday. A little measuring day today. Uh, make sure you make note of that two-day high. So a breakout over today's high could uh, potentially put the, put this two ace level in play and take a shot at these uh, these prior highs. Over the top of the list, going to the oil services, made a new high on the move here. The interesting thing is, the last time we really ran up to this level, we were getting getting eight nine bars up in the seeker setup phase. Now we're getting uh, only the two bars up here, so we can really take a look at some higher levels here and start talking about you know six A's, seven A's, maybe even eight A's here in this index. So the key thing is hold above the four A's level. You can see how that important level was already support. And now we can start talking about these higher levels here. And finally, let's close with the transports today. Transports were uh, fairly strong today. We're still a ways below the previous high water mark, but we have no, no risk here of a bar count. We don't have any major Murray math levels in the way. So uh, make sure you have some uh, loans available on the, uh, on the transports. And finally, one bonus chart here. Here's the semiconductors, the socks. If we do roll to the downside, definitely keep the uh, the socks on the uh, right side of your ticket ledger. This this could be the, the the one sector that that might be ready to roll along with the BTK. BTK had that uh, had that possible breakout um, in those those higher levels. It's it's eight days up now, working on nine. Here's the BTK. This could definitely be setting up a lower high here. So this this previous low is going to be very very important at four A's around the 2,000 level. But uh, but back to the socks. If the socks rolls down here again and loses the 50, that's going to be a, a pretty serious. And we can definitely see some uh, downside momentum gather in the semiconductors. All right, folks. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.